let's get the rant out of the way right now. Uh, the past few years, <clears throat> there's been plenty of literature made available to the American public, the Orthodox American public in particular, about the saints of the Jewish-Russian occupation, you know, the Bolsheviks. And so inspiring, let's face it. And a lot of people draw parallels between the Jew Jewish Bolshevik, Bol <laughs> the Jewish Bolshevik occupation and what's going on in America today and how there may be suffering to come. Uh, and it has occurred to me uh, that American Orthodox, we're not ready. And we are far from it. At least I know I am. Very, 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 very far from it. I don't know the first thing about suffering. I believe that we're just a bunch of eh, weaklings when it comes to this sort of thing. And maybe that's just the kick of the keister that we need from the good Lord to uh, bolster our faith increase our repentance, and bring us closer to the kingdom of heaven. Uh, with that being said, rant over, let's move on to the book, shall we? Shake the camera, roll the intro. Welcome back, everybody, to Orthodox Review, the most uneducated educational program here on the internet today. I am your host, the guy with one and a half thumbs. I'm so very, very pleased that you could join us today. Before we get into the subject of today's video, might I remind you that there are links below for those of you that are interested in supporting our work here, and I do pray for you constantly. You are in my prayers. I hope I am in yours, and I would like to thank especially uh, our Patreons and channel members for helping keep the lights on. Those lights are bright. Anyway, you saw the thumbnail, you saw the title. Today we're gonna to be talking about The Saint of the Prisons by Monk Moisey. And it is a banger, based. It's a based banger. It's a big old based banger. I don't read a whole lot anymore. Not nearly as much as I used to in the first few years of uh, my journey into orthodoxy. I used to read the lives of the saints and all sorts of other literature. And then in recent years, I've kind of slowed down and just been focusing on prayer and the work that I do here. But occasionally I do pick up a book and read it. And this, God help me and forgive me. Someone sent me this book. I don't remember who it is. If it was you, please let me know so I can thank you properly. I really need to start writing these things down. At any rate, mm, 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 mm. Uh, this was published, what, 2019? 2019. I've got notes over here, i got notes over here. There's going to be a whole lot of that back and forth thing, and I'll try to edit it out as best I can. So, uh, this is Notes on the Life of, of Valerio... I'm going to screw up his name. Gafensu? Anyway, uh, 24th of January 1921 to 18th February 1952. He was a legionary uh, before going to prison, and for those of you that I have not read it yet or were thinking of reading it, a great supplemental book to this would be For My Legionaries, uh, which is a eh, about the same size. You can read about it on Wikipedia. Anyway, so, uh, and actually, uh, the person, the author of this book actually served in the same prison as uh, Valerio, and we'll be getting into some of the people that he crossed paths with along the way. But let's give you the lowdown, like the truncated biography. Born in 1921, um, at the time, a city in Bessarabia, Bessarabia, in the region uh, northernmost part of the Kingdom of Romania, which is now part of Moldova. Uh, after the Soviet occupation, they kicked rocks to, uh, uh, to the, ref uh, the rest of Romania, and of course, uh, being a part of the legionaries, um, he was incarcerated in 1941 at the tender age, 20 years old. Uh, just out of school, incredibly likable, handsome, and faithful young man. There he, uh, there he suffered, uh, bouncing between prisons until his uh, calling back to the Lord in 1952. 31 years old, young guy, young guy. Anyway, so onto the book proper. Uh, the first thing I do want to say about the book. Um, outside of its contents is if you are a research-minded person like I am where you like things laid out for you in very binary sort of ways this will appeal to you in a way there is a lot a lot a lot a lot of contextual 
text in here that primes you up for his story and struggle. Plenty of information on uh, his upbringing, what was going on with the Legionaries, how he fit into that, um, and how the Legionaries fit into orthodoxy. There is a, uh, a lot of extant material from uh, elders of the time. Father George Calciu, in particular, was, who was a co-sufferer, uh, makes some appearances in here, both in extracts from his writings and in his travels. Something you will notice is that the names of some of these people um, are spelled just a bit differently than we're used to. So at first you're like, oh, who is that? Like, I should know. And then you realize it's just another spelling. There are some minor typographical errors that this being a first edition and I wouldn't call it self-published, but it's print on demand and you can get it with the link below. Be ready for that. I'm sure they'll correct it. It's a first edition, but the typographical errors are not nearly as egregious as I've seen in some other books. So it's easy to get by. I wrote a paragraph here and I'm going to read it. So while I'm reading it, why don't you look at this lovely stamp of uh, Valerio that is uh, from Mold Moldova. A truly inspiring story, presented in part in the man's own words, with extant references from known elders who suffered also at the time, Valerio's transformation in the prisons is nothing short of miraculous. Coming from the Brotherhood of the Cross, uh, again, see for my legionaries, then learning to truly see his sins spiritually and not just in an outward moral behavior in the context of a horrific prison life, it leaves me wondering if any of us I especially, can ever achieve the sort of repentance and holiness this suffering through Christ accomplished. Now, I would like to draw your attention to a bit on page 73, fairly early on in the book, that kind of sums things up. It reads, <clears throat> and I quote, However, Valerio looked at things differently after he acquired a spiritual consciousness. He realized that God's grace exacts more profound demands than those of uh, civil morality. Quote, I saw that I was a sinful man. I trembled at the thought of my sins and the thought of my powerlessness. I realized that I, who wanted an ideal world with all my heart, am a sinner. Therefore, the first thing necessary was for me to become a pure man, a new man. The new man toward which Valeria was now striving required a transformation much deeper than that of the moral hero and was typically understood in, in legionarianism. This was the spiritual man who, renewing himself through repentance, cleansed the robe of baptism of the filth of sin. Two paragraphs right there that pretty much sum up the whole book. Now, throughout his stay in the prisons, he did have access later on to books, the writings of the fathers, to uh, service texts, uh, books on ascetics. And in fact, Way of a Pilgrim, he said, was his guidebook. And... That being the first book a lot of us read as we're coming into orthodoxy really sh hits close to home. Now, his, his normal routine, okay, he was, a, he was a, after, after begging God for this, I mean, the tears came. The tears came and his heart broke and he saw his sins and he lived a life of prayer and prostrations. Uh, read the canon, you know, the, uh, the paraclysis every day, which... Is not that hard a thing for us to do when you think about it. We got it easy. Um, now, he was in solitary confinement for the first few years of his incarceration from 1941 to 1943, uh, relying mostly on the Jesus prayer. Uh, and of course, in letters to his family had said, you know, he's hungry. And, and he wasn't allowed to do that before he was out of solitary. But, you know, he was just, the, 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 things were terrible. Absolutely terrible. That being said, I'm not going to ruin anything more from this. I'm not going to give you the full rundown, uh, but what I want you to know is that it is extremely inspiring uh, to read the lives of these prison saints, okay, from the Jewish Bolshevik occupation in uh, Eastern Europe and in Russia. And I think in today's day and age especially, we can glean a lot from the suffering of these saints. Now, He's not yet canonized. Uh, the church in Romania started considering him back in 2013, but let's face it, uh, his cult is rising. Hey, here's an icon. He was declared a, uh, an honorary citizen of the town of uh, Targu Okna in 2009, but was rescinded in 2013 because of his participation 
in the uh, Legionaries' Rebellion of January of 1941, which is when he was convicted. Although, according to this account, he wasn't really involved in that so much as he was just a spiritual man that was involved in the movement and not so much in the insurrection. I'll leave it at that. Hey, everyone, go out and just buy this book. Trust me, you're going to love it. You don't have to thank me. Thank God for the holiness and sanctification and glorification of his saints who inspire us to do better. Um, that's it. As you were. Enjoy the rest of your day. I love you. I love you to bits. And on behalf of Spooky Cat and myself, don't forget to go to church, say your prayers, and remember God. God bless.